Why wake up at 3 a.m. to write? A lot of the times, uh, I don't have a choice. You know, um, it's one of those things when I came out of grad school, uh, the American Film Institute, uh, I went straight out of that into Sony Pictures Entertainment. I was recruited out of there into Sony to work in development and production. Um, at that stage, Screen Gems had uh, separated from worldwide acquisitions as a division and they got a new head of uh, division from Fox who came over and he was looking for someone who could read scripts um, and I just happened to meet him at the right time. Um, but that was very heavy kind of work, reading scripts, analysing scripts um, and I had very little time during the day, you know, um, to do my own writing. So my bent was if you want to write, you have to put the time in, you have to sit down. Um, and so I had to find time to do that. It was hard, I'm not going to lie, you know, getting up at 3am and writing for three hours and then getting ready and going to work, doing my day job, coming home. Um, eventually, you know, I had two little kids and that became even harder. Uh, but it, it, for me, if you're going to be successful as a screenwriter, you, you have to find the time no, no matter what. And so I'm a morning person as well, so I operate better in the morning at night than I do at night. Uh, and a lot of people have different schedules, but, but that's pretty much the reason. Do I still do it? No. Um, but uh, back when I first started with Sony, yes, I did. And I, I, I ended up pushing out two or three scripts over 18 months. And when did you stop doing that? When did you stop getting up at 3 a.m.? Um, I guess not long before the pandemic. Um, I was still getting up every so often to work on a project. And the reason I do it is I love writing. Uh, I didn't want that to fade into the background because I'd fell in love with development as well. Um, and development was a big part of what I started at Sony as. Uh, I got a lot of story editing work. Uh, when the Worldwide Acquisitions Group would, would be looking at a project in one of the festivals or we would get a package from other agencies, uh, I would actually read the script to see if we were on a solid foundation as far as analysis goes. So um, I loved doing that work. I love working with other writers' material and helping them craft it into something that can then turn into a film or TV. Um, but uh, I think that that's, you know, for me, the story editing side became all-encompassing, so the writing became less, and I wasn't able to be as voluminous. But I'm still writing. Um, now my, my calendar is a little more flexible, so I don't have to get up at 3 a.m. I can actually be in charge of my own schedule, um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't have to do that anymore. Um, and look, I would prefer not to get up at 3. 5 o'clock, okay, but 3, no. Nah. Has your writing changed at all now that you're on your own schedule? Do you feel a freedom with the writing that wasn't there before or the two don't correlate? Uh, no, they do. I think when I first started out, I still had a lot to learn. Um, one of the philosophies I have, you know, if you're going to get better as a writer, you have to read, you have to watch and you have to write. Now, they're the three things and you have to be doing those all the time. Um, I still had a lot to learn when I came out of grad school. So the only way to do that is to sit and write. But the luxury of the job I got at Sony was I got to do a lot of reading. Um, one of the scripts that did change my life uh, as a writer and really gave me a good look at not just formatting but structure and the economy that you need to have for a good read of a screenplay um, was Faster by Dwayne Johnson. You know, we got a chance to kind of do some development on that. Um, it's not a very well-known movie of his. Uh, it's very kind of straight-laced action. Um, and, but the, the script by Tony and Joe Gayton was one of the most extraordinary things I'd ever read. You know, um, and it was specific to that genre. But the way they were able to condense uh, a paragraph down into three or four words, you know, and still convey that energy and the image that you need to tell a visual story was incredible. Um, and I learned a lot as a writer by by developing and reading that, that material and the material to come, you know. I got a chance to read Ari Aster's Hereditary before it became a film, a fellow AFI alum, and uh, that, that that's a lot of reading, you know. He's directing his own material, but um, there's not as much economy, if you like. So the ability to read that and to, to develop my own style around some of that and also know from a studio level and a, and a management level what is a good read of a screenplay um, has really helped my own writing, certainly.
Going back to your days at Sony, can you share with us what this story editing department looked like? What was your day like? What was it composed of? How many people worked there? Sure. Um, I worked in a smaller division, so I'm not talking about Columbia Pictures who have the, an entire story department. Um, it's much bigger. Uh, I worked for Worldwide Acquisitions, which was a much smaller division of Sony. Um, and a lot of the divisions at Sony, you know, they have their own bu budgets and they operate as independent, you know, companies. So I worked in Worldwide Acquisitions where you're, you're kind of required to wear more than one hat. So when I first started, I started as a story editor. I started as an assistant to the president of the division. Um, I would work as a coordinator uh, in acquisitions for festival work. Um, and so it wasn't just one job. So a lot of the people who were hired in those smaller divisions had to wear more than one hat. So if I was to say, what does the story department look like back then? Um, we did have internships and a lot of the scripts from, you know, I won't, I won't say lesser agents, but lesser known agents to the division would be read by interns um, who were generally taken from colleges or places where they already had experience. They would read scripts. If they liked the script, they'd pass it up. Someone like me uh, as a junior would then read it um, and, so, and so on. And there were about three or four of us that would do that while we assisted the more senior executives. Um, so it's not just reading, it's a it was a training ground for me as well. And I was lucky to be in that, uh, in that smaller division because the bigger divisions like Columbia, um, you specialise in story. So you specialise in those story departments. Um, that didn't happen to me. I got, a, I got a grounding in film packaging. I got a grounding in story. I got a grounding in you know, the financial analysis, business affairs. And so um, we, we were much more eclectic in the way we approached the job than just story. And this was before the collapse of the DVD market? Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, one, of the, one of the, and I was, you know, until last year, I'd been at Sony uh, about 13 and a half years, so since 2008. Um, and back then, we, was, we were still making movies for DVD. You know, um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren, you know, they weren't selling theatrical movies in the US, but they were selling millions of units in, the, in Europe and places like that on DVD. Uh, so we would make those for the international market. Uh, and that was still a big concern then. So I also got to watch the transition from that out of that into, you know, Blu-ray and then into the Blu-ray packets you had with digital online versions and then the explosion of streaming. Um, and now DVD is just a collector's market. Like, like vinyl. Like, like vinyl. Yeah, absolutely.